Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are looking at Lindisfarne. Oh, no. We're going to be taking on the role of Vikings traveling across Europe and pillaging the villages and ransacking all of the goods for them. So let's get to the table and check out Lindisfarne. All right, here is the setup for Lindisfarne. We have our three different areas of the map. We're going to be rolling dice based on how many tokens we have. Now, right off the bat, John and I each have six tokens. Um, we're playing a two-player game, and so John's going ahead and seating the board for the third player. You have a kind of a dummy player when you're playing with two players, um, but this the setup for that is really simple. So he's going to be putting their tokens on the board. Now, this is basically an area majority game where you are trying to place your tokens on these different boards to gain the most points for those so that you can take uh, be the first one to take the cards from them. So I'll just explain really fast what all three of these boards mm -hmm. are. And this one, you're trying to get the most... Uh, uh, total number. So in this case, they have one, uh, one, what do you call that, chit in the six spot. So they just have six points up there. So if somebody comes behind them and gets more, then they will take the lead for that area. For this area, you're trying to get runs in a row. So Ooh. they've, yeah, that sounds that's, bad. That sounds uh, so they've got a three and a four. If we get a two, three, and a four, that will take over that spot. And then this one, you're trying to get the highest stack of one spot. And so that is. I win. Uh, John is is gonna win. So how you do this is again you roll the dice for how many how many of the chits the counters that you have in your hand. I have we each start off with six, and you'll roll. Now you can place these chits onto one of the board base. I, <laughs> I just feel like it sounds. I, the way I gotta you're think of a better name. Chits, token. Just, token. It just you sounds can, weird. It sounds creepy actually. You can take one of the tokens, <laughs> uh, or take as many tokens as you want to put on one board based <laughs> on what you roll. Uh, I started off with one, two, three, four, five. I could just straight up put five down here. On, I'm sorry, up here <laughs> on the on the right. Can't do it there. <laughs> Um, or I could put two of these fives stacked on top of each other here, which would give me the lead here. Um, no, it wouldn't. It would tie me here, and they would have the lead. So whoever's highest, I don't think you mentioned that, whoever's highest on these rows will break the tie. Correct. Now, you are looking at the cards to see which ones you want to get. Now, I'm looking around, and I think I would like to have this Norway card, which those are the yellow ones that give you the... Let me just throw it up there. Special ability. It's going to give you this special ability. And what that is, is this shows you the symbol of the country, this shows you how many points you're gonna get, and then this shows a special ability. This one lets you move one time per game, move one of your counters onto uh, another board. Uh, I'm taking a long time taking my turn, so I'm just going to Golly. place, I know it, That's what I was a lot of explanation. I'm gonna take my two, three, and four. Now I could again put my one and five on here as well but just enough to give me the lead and hopefully that'll be enough where John doesn't want to take that one over. Yeah, um, okay, so let's see here. I could tie here. I do like that one okay, but you know, I'm not like, I'm not in love with it. I don't want to marry it. I mean, I don't know if I want to do that with any of these cards ever in any game. Mm-hmm. I want to, I think I'm just gonna take my six. Let's just see what happens. There you go. All right. Uh, Just slow play it for a minute. So now I've got three tokens left. I'm going to roll these tokens. You, you're not rolling tokens. I can. Uh, you're rolling dice. I'm going to roll these dice <laughs> to place my tokens. What's That's, happening? I don't know. Vocabulary is very difficult. <laughs> this was a terrible roll, and I can't do anything about it now. Now, you can get these rune tokens that can change the pips on those dice, but I don't have any of those right now. I don't really know what I want to do. I think I could. Could just go fivers, huh? I could, if I get the second place up here, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to take my five and put that here. Great. Yeah, and then just hope all I would need at that point is a two to be able to take second place there. Okay, so I have, I could totes win that one, no problemo, if I wanted to. Um, but you know, you know. I'm I don't just, know. I'm going to go, I'm going to go double on the threes there. Yeah, that's a good call. I like okay. that. I like that. All right, now, what we're doing right now is we are preparing to depart. Now, we can return to the village, and if we do that, we're saying, I don't want to put any more tokens out on the board. I just want to turn these tokens in for rune tokens, which will let you, kind of like in Castles of Burgundy, move the pip on your die up one or up down per rune token. You doing that? I you just No, it? I can't because yeah, I have to I have to be say. able to get that. So I'm going to roll two here. But all you need is anything. That's true. Well, I need a, at least a two. So yeah. I'm going to place a three here. And oh, not on the five. 
Sorry, a three. Wow, Dude, what's happening in I don't this game know. for you? Oh, oh my apart. goodness. And then I'll pass the dice back over to you. You gonna keep rolling? Of course I am. Because I mean, I want to. Yeah, right now you're you're certainly in win that. Last you're, you're, place you're, right yeah, now. you're winning this one now. Um. Ooh, you got those two fives though. Yeah, but I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste that. But I don't know. Um, yeah, and your number's a three. My bad. I was thinking it was a. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's, that's tricky. an interesting decision. So I've got six. You have eight. Hmm. You know what? Let's just solidify the win on that. Yep. It's gonna do that. Okay. Yeah, that was probably good because I could have come behind and, and potentially rolled a six or something. Right. Like that. But because I, there's no way that I can get majority in this one, there's no way that John can take majority in this one. Um, and I, he's solidified that already. I'm already got second. So I'm gonna come back to the village, which means I'm gonna turn my token in. Boop. Take a rune token, and that'll set me up for the next round. And because I'm the first one to come back from the village to the village, I'm going to take this Jarl token, which is the first player token. Yarl. Now it's your turn. So here's my decision. Um, number one, I've got this, so I'm going to get a pick here. Over here, I'm actually losing. So what this means is because the whatever player. Computer player. Computer player. <laughs> AI. AI. Maybe. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> is winning, Dean's gonna get to pick which card to remove. So I will have no choice. So I can take a die and chuck it and hope I roll a three, but I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, because I think that call. the odds are not ever in my favor or not much in my favor there. So that's I'm gonna do the same call. thing Dean did. Dean, Dean. <laughs> same thing Dean <laughs> did, and I'll take a rune token. So there we go. All right, now what we do is we look at the different boards, starting with this one to see who has majority. John has majority on that one, so he mm -hmm. will pick the first card. Now, he can either pick a card from there. If he doesn't like it, he can take two objective cards, which, let me just throw one up there. Yeah, the objective idea. cards say that you have to complete all three of those objectives, meaning you have to have cards in your, oh. It's not wanting to focus yeah. very well today, is it? <laughs> you have to have all three of those um, symbols on cards to be able to, that's not looking great. It's today. still not good. <laughs> Sorry, Meeple Town. Let's try that. Hey, again. let's just put it in there a little blurry. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, you have to have all three of those symbols on there to be able to um, uh, to be able to complete this objective, which is going to give you ten points. Symbols from these cards that you right. have out there. Correct. Yeah. So, all right, I am going to take this one because there are no other black flags up here, which is good for me, I think, because I'm not because I don't want Dean to take one. And we're trying to get. I think. You, did you mention what we're trying to do with these? I did not. So let okay. me, yeah, I can, I, I mentioned on the Norway cards, on those, you're forming a fresco and that, you know, uh, they have either Here, five I mean, or six cards. Let's attempt that. <laughs> yeah, they have either five or six cards uh, and that shows with the symbol on this. So this is the second card in the fresco and you can get points based on how many you are getting in a row uh, yeah. for that. And that's also and there's the, only the one of each. On there. There's only one of each. So you kind of got risk. The reason I took this one mostly was because it was worth two points. And if I take this one right here, Dean could take this next, and that would give me less of a chance to complete that fresco. So that was easy decision for me. Right. Um, and because I'm looking, you know, kind of looking at all the different options, I'm only going to be able to take from here and here. I will go ahead and take this one, and that's all of those cards. And then we take from this one, which will be me, and I'll take this one. Ooh, it's kind of tricky. So you get points for a lot of different things in this game. You're going to get points for the frescoes that you have. The points that are listed up here, you get points for um, having the majority of the different colors. Oh, so, I just poured coffee on me again. Again. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little crazy. BRB. Um, you can keep talking. I'll so, be right back. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, this is super professional. Um, but if I if I have a majority of a specific country, then I'm going to get four points for that majority. So I do have a decision here. I could just go for the fresco in this one, or I could have taken this one and then immediately taken the red one, and that worked towards the uh, having another majority. It also helps me with the objectives that I draw along the way. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go keep for. Talking while I was doing that? No, it's fine. I'm going to go for getting a a larger fresco on this one. Do you remember fresco style Taco Bell? No. I don't really? Know what that is. Yep. They back in the day when they were trying to be healthy, they let you fresco style. I used to work at Taco Bell. Just want to let you know, Taco Bell did not pay advertisement for us to talk about it right now. You want to go ahead and take your turn? Yep. Okay. So one, I do want to mention that I. Doing this did give Dean two in the same, and I know that. 
but, but they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of far apart, yeah. and so I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Because um, if they don't, as Dean was saying, if they don't, right? Oh, we discard this one too. Yeah. By the way, I'll just go ahead and throw this. Then out. it's not really going to do him much good, but it does give you you do get two points. Okay, so Dean, you pick. No, I don't. Oh, I do. I'm pick for them. So I looking over there. Uh, this one's worth two. We're points. nailing this video. I know. Man. This one's worth two points. Um, John's not going for this one. This one allows him to move a token. Honestly, I don't love that ability, and I would rather him not. Well, he could take majority on Norway too. I'm just going to discard this one. I think. Um, I would have rather had that one. So you would rather have the one that I, I discarded. So, yeah. Really? Okay. It's not a terrible ability, but it's not. It's not my favorite either. All right. Now we're going to take our tokens. And off that's only board. once per game. Right. And you play through six rounds of this. We're actually just going to play through Let's two of these to one. show to show you, uh, give you an idea. We're going to put out new destination cards on these locations. John's going to seed the board. And whoa, hey -oh. Whoa. Hey, I'm going to take these oh and throw them up here real fast just to show you. So with this one, I might have them on there backwards, do I? No, I don't. Um, with this one, this shows you the fresco. So you've got the two. Do I have that on backwards? Yeah, I do. I can't see. I've got a you glare. You don't have it on. You had it on the right way. Oh, what did you, I? What I've, got a glare. <laughs> I've got a glare on the board, and I can't see the screen very well. There we go. All right. Oh, my um, gosh. So you've got this uh, symbol that's right next to this one, and obviously you can look at the picture now and see that it's part of the same fresco. That guy's got a sword going through his head. <laughs> Yikes. Serious business. Uh, but anyway, that's how you're going to get more points by building up those frescoes. And there then I'll go. take two more destination cards. You might want to fix that one up fresco there. Fresco style, Taco Bell. And... Uh, that's it. All of them are pretty normal. This one is a new Norway card that came out there. This says that if you take this card at the end of the game, you can draw a card from the discard pile and you'll be able to put that into play. That's a powerful card right it there. It can be really good. So that might be one that we're going this for. This is a heck of a round for me personally. I'm just going to say because there are three of these black cards that yeah. have come out and I have this. Yeah, that is um, very true. And there's that card up there. So there's some really interesting decisions. Oh, I did not love this. Especially when I'm trying to get, oh, uh, I would really like to get this one up here. I think this one's going to be helpful, but the problem is they have 11 up there already. So if I put a six and a five, it's not going to guarantee You'll me. It, to it'll guarantee me. One. Yeah. So I'm just going to put one six up here Maybe roll and then six. kind of slow play. There is some merit to slow playing in this game too. I could have used my rune token to change that five to a six, but I didn't really want to waste it that early. Wow, this is tough for me because this wasn't not this wasn't not a this great roll. Not. Like part of me is I would I could get a run of three and go ahead and take one of these. However, it's not right next to this. Um, this one is, which would help me at the end of the game for show. Sure. Yeah. And then up there, I like that one, but I might just. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go take one, two, three. I'm not gonna do one, two, three, four either. Yeah, I'm going to save those three. Okay. You good? All right. Yes, I'm going to take five dice then. Can I get two more, please? And roll these. If you do a run all the way across, you get both. I just made up that rule right uh, there. That is not the case. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet, though. All right. I'm going to take my six and go ahead and at that least solidify second you. place. Now, here's the other thing, though. If I can potentially get a six later, it wouldn't be awful for me to take those two twos and stack them up and give me that second place spot either. Um, the, the issue with this this setup is that none of these cards really help me, but all I'm trying to do is really try to hurt John. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm gonna hold off and hope that I roll a six that was later. pretty smart. And then take those two twos and again, <sighs> solidify this at least second place in that spot. He may tempt me to try to go up there and steal that from him now. Still this one. Depending on what happens. You could. You have a lot more dice than I do. So there's a Ooh, double five. So I could, I could take the lead on that. Or I could do that. You know what, Dean? In your face. That does not go there. You go down here. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of it's hard to hear because we have a little I mean, see, seeing and hearing. It's hard to see because we have a little bit of a glare on the board too. But um anyway. Fix that in in editing. Because I placed in here first, I'll actually be able to stack up that. Now I don't know if we talked about this in the first round, but you go from top to bottom when it comes to ties, yeah, we, and that's that's the tiebreaker. So he's got six points, I have ten. But you know what? Let's see what happens. You have three more to roll. 
I uh, did not get exactly what I wanted. Shoot. But I do have a rune token that I can change I one done of that. those. That was that was spite that I went after you. Um, for. Yep. I do think. Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I need a six, so I think I will. I'm gonna change my pip on there oh. to make that a six. Um, I don't like using that rune token, but I just feel like that's you're probably killing me this move. round because I, that was a dumb, dumb move of me. Now there is also we mentioned that if you're the first player to go out, you get the Yarl token, which allows you to be the first player token. That can be pretty important. So even if you don't want to put, you know, even if you think I really want to be able to get more tokens out there, you might also think about setting up for the for the later rounds. I'm actually doing that. Are you really? So this, I mean, it's a terrible round for me. There's no way I can win this. And winning that is an absolute long shot. Yeah. You, I mean, if you, you got, you have any rune two. tokens? I've got two. Yeah. Oh, no, no I rune mean, tokens. No rune though. tokens. So if you, if I, I guess I could, you know what? You're a Viking. We're on video. Just go for it. We're on yes. video. <laughs> two. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, I, do I want to do my rune token now and and because right now that two is just going to tie it which means you have to at least play a one no I'm not gonna waste my rune token okay You're split. so you have 12 on there I also have 12 which I have the lead because I'm farther up on the board and John in this game like you usually play these types of oh games. you didn't come back you didn't know oh, I am coming back so uh, am I yes I am so I'm gonna take these two rune tokens and I don't know if I could come back from that terrible of a round. Yeah, it's good thing we're not playing a full game because it'd be. Uh, let's finish it it'd up. Be a victory hey, for this guy. Let's hurry this up. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. I don't have oh, that's right. You don't have any dice. All right. So again, we compare up here. Mm -hmm. I will be the one that's in the lead. I do like the potential of being able to get this. It is only one victory point, but it also will keep me on par with. Hold up a second. Joy Wait a second. Norway. I could use this. You could use that. That's right. But it won't help me. I can't so. now because you've already come back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I didn't think about that earlier. That will be helpful for you, though. I could have. Future. I could have. I should have used that that round probably. Okay, I took this one. Nobody gets this one because. Uh, or no, no, no. John gets this. I'm sorry. You are in second place in this one. Is that right? Um. So, actually, yeah. You yeah. Are, you oh, are second. I didn't even realize that. So he can get that one, or he can look. Take that did matter. Two objective cards. It did. That's oh, true. look at that. Even a, a dum dum occasionally <laughs> something good happens. Um, so then you get to pick up here. I think I will take the red. I will say that uh, last time I played this game, <clears throat> I spread myself way too thin and tried to get a bunch of them, and then I ended up losing terribly to Dean. So <laughs> I, I feel like it's probably better to focus on two to three colors here. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. You want to have the majority as well, and Dean can share that at the thing. And go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot to think about for sure. Um, in this one, let's see. You're not going to be taking anything from this one, and I will be able to. Let's see. I think I'm just going to take this one. It's two that's, points. That stinks for him though, because it's because he's not going to. My three is going to break it. The most he can get is two in a row. Right. Okay, that is, uh, that's how you play. Now you play through six rounds of that, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the game, this is kind of cool, but this, I'm just gonna flip all these off of there. Wow. Before we start talking about the art and components, which is probably would've made more sense. Um, when you flip this off of here, you, this becomes the scoreboard. Um, you've got the here. scoring markers up what here. What in the world? I'm gonna throw this on here first. Uh, you've got the scoring markers that are on there, then this shows you what the breakdown for the scoring is. And I'll go ahead and talk about what that is. So you're gonna get 10 points for your objective cards that you complete and which seems like a lot but it is difficult to complete more than maybe two mm -hmm. in a game potentially three but so for example that. if Dean had this one it would not have been completed because he needs a teal right right but then playing through six rounds so once you get objective cards you can play for them but anyway it's it's not maybe not as powerful as you think and then you get four points for the majority that you have in each of the different countries uh, right now I think John would have majority in one and I would have majority in one in this one. So we would both get four points. If you're tied like we are in Norway, then you both get the points. Mm -hmm. And in uh, red. Right, right, and in red, that's right. Uh, this one, uh, you're gonna get the points that are listed on the cards. And then at the bottom, it shows you the points that you get for the fresco. So if you have two that are in a row, you're gonna get two points all the way up to completing one of the sixes is gonna give you 20, 20 points, points which is a, that's a lot, it's a yeah. lot. So anyway, that's how scoring works. Let's talk about the art and components. Okay, uh, I like the art in this game. I like I like the art on the cards. Um, 
I like the art on the board's pretty good. What do you? I like how this flips over. Yeah, that's a, uh -huh. that's a neat yeah. um, way to do this. I will say, uh, if I, I, I will flip this back over for just a second. Uh, if you all saw, oh my goodness, is this right? Nope. Where is this? Oh my goodness, it's that. Nobody way. tell. Boom. It's like Geography a is hard. I think this is cool. Yeah. I think some people are going to be driven insane by the gap here that are maybe are OCD or something and want to close, have something that looked more like that. But I like a little abstractness, man. It makes a lot more sense because you need to have those boards separated. separated you know, yeah. if you had it slid down, it might be a little more difficult to to see. So I, th I love the look of it. I, I think the art on the mm -hmm. board is really cool. I just, I, yeah, I just love that look. It's very... It feels very Viking-ish. The the art on the fresco cards I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Once you get one of those complete, which we've never done, we've never no, completed not, an entire, not, not which entire is one. really difficult to do anyway. But three or four is yeah yeah four is pretty high I think of, of the amount of cards yeah. you can get in the fresco. But they look really cool when you get them on the table, and I, I love it does that. kind of feel like you accomplished something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. It's got that Takedo. Yeah. Kind of deal. The only negative I have is I've noticed like this guy's kind of already split. Did you yeah. notice that uh -huh. on the? So I don't know how good of a quality or. I don't. Th I think I actually did that whenever I was putting it together, really? punching it out. Yeah. Sometimes okay. you know when you're pushing those pieces together, they can they can yeah. kind of split out open, but that will never change because you're not really using this other than to pass it around. Yep. So Gameplay overall good. Gameplay. You go first. I did the art and components. Yep. First. Yeah. I, I like the gameplay. This gives me feels of um, Cosmic Run Regeneration is one that we just reviewed not that long ago, where the you're push your luck rolling dice and then putting them out, you know, allocating those onto the board, and and then the push your luck element of of you know when to when to return back to the village in this one, uh, because getting these rune tokens is really good, and having the Jarl token is really good, but at the same time you want to make sure that you're getting majority. So I I like that. I like the action part of that. I I really enjoy the scoring in this game. I like how there there are multiple ways to score points in this game. So if you're thinking, wow, I'm not going to be able to complete this fresco, which when you play the game initially, frescoes, at least for us, frescoes were kind of the focus of our first game because you think, okay, that's what I want to complete. But that's not necessarily the way that you're going to get the most points. The majority in these different countries and also the, objectives the objective give you a cards lot of can give you a lot of points as well. So you could completely ignore the fresco and just go for objectives and, yeah, yeah. and, and majority, like you that's were saying, right. and just say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about getting them in a row. Yeah. Well, and the points that are listed on the cards, you could mm -hmm. focus on getting the better the cards, which ones. are worth zero, um, or you can just focus on getting the two point cards. And that's, I think that's a valid strategy too not your overall strategy but it helps for sure so yeah that's my, i like that a lot it's my favorite part of the game the is scoring the scoring part. yeah, yeah. is the way that you have several different moving pieces you never feel like you're like overwhelmed but you do have something to definitely think about mm -hmm. i feel like and, and when those cards come out try and decide which ones you want to go for you know i went for interestingly i went for one of these and went heavy towards this but if i would have gone heavy towards this one i could have drawn one of these out of the the pile if one of them had you know stayed there like there was so i mean yeah i don't know man um actually i wouldn't have because one of them would have been the bad guy not the bad guy the bad <laughs> <computer> guy <player. laughs> he's not a bad guy well he is a bad guy sometimes that's right <laughs> um but you know that's a that could be a powerful card these things can kind of you know the norway cards can kind of change the game i yeah. like that um yeah they're generally i think less points oftentimes um especially how powerful they are they are right so it's well balanced with that so i like that about it i will say Ha doing area majority and putting tokens out here is not like my total jam. I don't, it's not, it's interesting. You can have some interesting parts, but I'm not like, yeah, I can't wait to do that again. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The variability is, is one of the issues that I have with the game. And that, that goes with, um, kind of along with what you're you saying. You think it feels samey the more you play it? It For sure. Yeah, for sure. It does. Now the, the variability comes in how the cards come out, you know, the timing of those cards. Um, but the the most interesting cards that you're getting are those Norway cards that change the rules, you know, that, that give you different special boost along the game. Mm -hmm. But there's only eight of those in the entire game. You have... There's fact, ten total. Yeah, ten in, in the box. Eight. You remove two. So you don't always know what's coming out, but you have a good idea of what's going to be coming out yeah. the more and more you play this game. And so I think it becomes samey after a while for sure. Yeah. it's. I mean, if you like push your luck and you like set collection... I mean, those are two things that aren't my favorite. This isn't super push your luck, though. It's, there is that element of push your luck, but it's not like, yeah, it's not super push your luck, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, but there is. There is an element. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah. And if you like that, then I think you might really like these games. I will say that set collection, for those who've watched our channel, is not my favorite mechanic. I like it in a game as kind of like something off to the side, like a little bit. You know, there's plenty of games like that. The masks on Teo to walk in. I like that, but I don't love it as like the primary feature. So it's still a fun game. I still like this, but some of the mechanics are just not my personal favorite. And if you like those, you might really like this. So yeah, final thoughts? Yeah, final thoughts. So for me, uh, I'm with John. I do like this game. Uh, I don't love this game, but I love some pieces about it. You know, I love the the scoring parts of this, uh, even though it is, you know, mostly set collection when you're looking at that, that scoring piece. Yeah. Um, I still, I like that. I like set collection more than you do for sure. Um, but I don't love it. You know, I, I do enjoy the um, allocating of the dice into the different mm-hmm. boards and it is, it can become, you know, kind of a thinky thing at times. And I, I enjoy that. So for me, I'm going to give this one a six and a half. It's a game that I enjoy the one that if it's, you know, if it's offered up to play, I'll play it. But it's not one that I'm going to, you know, often suggest, and it's. Uh, it, I think it becomes stale the more and more you play this game. Yeah, and that is a six is okay. We'll play if in the mood. A seven is usually willing to play. So Dean's somewhere in somewhere the in there. between there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, you know, interesting thing about this game. My final thoughts. I think this is a really well designed game. I think it it's plays smooth. It feels like. Yeah, it's, it's it's like I said, it's designed well. Um, I don't love set collection, like I said. I don't love just putting putting my tokens out and just trying to have the kind of area majority. It's okay, it's fine. I do like the rune tokens, how that mitigates, and you do have those decisions about coming back. You also could maybe really like the objective cards. I mean, not the objective cards, the uh, fresco cards. But then you go, then you're like, oh shoot! But I really need some more objectives. So that's kind of those are fun decisions to make um, in the game. So I I like this game. I don't love it. I think a lot of there's a lot of people out there that will really will like this game quite a bit. I like the theme. I like the art on it. I think that's really cool as well. But there's just I told Dean before we play this. There's something about the game that just doesn't really scratch my. I'm mm-hmm. super excited about it. Itch <clears throat> like, sure. but I think it's a good game. Um, I'm gonna give it six out of ten. Mm-hmm. I think I, I thought about a six and a half, which means okay, we'll play from the mood, and that's that's about right. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm usually willing to play. Uh, yeah, I'm not, but it's fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's a six and a half out of me. I hope you don't think that six is bad because it's not. It's a, it's a good game. No, no, no. It is a, it is a good game, and I think you know if you really love set collection, if you love that uh, you know faster dice allocation type games. Um, I think this is going to be one that you would quite enjoy. And the theme, too. And the theme. Like the theme. And yeah, the theme. Cool. Yeah. So that's a six and a half for me, a six from John. Tell people how they can get in touch with us. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe. And we, you can go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out all of our stuff, our YouTube stuff, our podcast, all that. We are at Meepletown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.